Hello, it's Mark from Lightmap. We're going to light this front view of a watch in Cinema 4D with Arnold Render and HDR Light Studio. So the kind of look that we're going for is something like this. So we've got the watch face here and we can see in these reflections, it looks like we've got two really large lights where they graduate from this bottom edge and then there's a bit of a highlight at the top here and you can see that in the strap. And it's kind of the same thing in the bottom. It starts off brighter, graduates off, then gets brighter at the bottom here. So we're going to go for this effect. And that's kind of a similar look to this. So, okay. So in Cinema 4D, we've made a HDR Light Studio light projects. And we'll press Start to open up HDR Light Studio. Okay, so we've got Light Studio open. It's uh, basically the default layout for standalone. And then I've dragged and dropped in the render view for Cinema 4D Arnold in HDR Light Studio. So I'll press play here. And then we can see the live render is being streamed from Cinema 4D on Arnold now into the HDR Light Studio interface. So my first thought for lighting this shot is to just take down the brightness of the background and to take um, a softbox let's say take this one let's drag and drop it onto the view and then we'll take the handle and make it near the bottom edge click just here on the face and then we'll scale up the light to be really really huge now the problem we've got here is that that is reflecting in the face of the watch here but because the bezels are at an angle we're actually not seeing it and I, I can't make that light go any larger. Um, let's make a round light and just click on the edge here. Okay, and then make another round light and click on the edge here. And we can see how far the light would have to extend until you could actually get it reflecting in this bezel uh, like we saw on the reference image. So we're going to have to take a different approach to light this and get that kind of lighting. And we can actually do it using only the gradient background. So we'll delete all of these lights now. And then we're going to light this just with this background. So I'll put the brightness up to 100, so it's decently bright. And then we'll come down to the value ramp and we'll click on the graph button. And then we can start to add and edit points on here and try and craft the same kind of look. So to start with, we'll just double click here and we'll create a bright point. And then we'll double click and drag down the dark, double click another dark point, double click and then drag up. OK, so already you can see we've got this uh, black part of that reflection is working okay. Now when I work on a ramp, um, this ramp is linear and when that gets mapped to the LUT for the view which is sRGB, it means you don't get a lot of control. You don't get exactly what you see on this ramp isn't what you get because the LUT has been applied and it's kind of boosted uh, the darker areas. To compensate for this, I use this log button uh, which creates a logarithmic interpretation of this which kind of negates that. Um, so simply put, in general when I'm working on a ramp I turn on the log button and I get a lot more control uh, and what I see in this ramp is much more accurate to what I see in the view. That's, uh, that's what I always do. Okay, so now we can carry on editing this ramp. So let's just take this down to be darker over on that edge and then we need to work on this kind of being a bit sharper and a bit brighter so I'm going to take the brightness of this light up now I'm going to double it so it gives us more brightness to play with but then I can add another point here and I'm going to change the interpolation of this to Bezier so everything's nice and smooth Add a point on there. So I want the top to be the brighter and then this bottom one. So I'm going to move all of this a little bit along now. OK, 
because it's not quite at the right. Actually, that's that's not actually too bad. Um, bring that down a little bit. Okay, so in terms of the effect that we've got on this area and on this area, I think that's looking pretty good now. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Okay, so we'll finish there. Now, before I go any further, I actually want to put a, a light in the background to act as a background because this black line and the brightness of all of this is a bit off-putting so I'm going to find just a simple light here and I'm going to double click to add it to the canvas and by chance that position is actually centered and behind uh, the watch there if I make that much smaller we can see if I just move that up a little bit that is going to be behind the watch there just a little bit more Great, that's near enough, and we'll scale that up. And I'm going to solo that, and then keep on scaling it. So that's, yeah, that's not starting to affect the rest of the watch too much. If I made it really big, you can see it's actually starting to reflect in the front of the watch. So I'll undo that. There we go. So that looks fine to me. And we'll then just adjust the brightness of that, so that's just off from being white. And that's a nice way to light, you know, you've got the comparison now of that background against your model. So based on this, I think I want to uh, graduate the lighting off a little bit more than it is now. So I do actually want to go a bit darker as we're falling off there. And a bit darker as we're falling off there, just to get a bit more tone into it. Okay, so the next thing to do is to put a bit of brightness at the top and the bottom like we saw in our reference image. So I'm going to create a soft round light and then we'll click on the strap down here and then we'll scale that up. And again, I'm gonna put this log onto there so it just falls off a little bit more. Boost the brightness, that's great. You can see there's a nice uh, kind of highlight coming into the bottom there, which was, we had that on our reference image. I'm going to duplicate that light, and we'll do the move the duplicate above by clicking on the strap up there. Okay, and that's come across really nice as well. Now, as I'm looking at this shot, I can see this black line running across the front of the actual face of the watch and I'd like to get rid of that. So I'm going to create a soft round light. I'm going to change the blend modes to over and make the uh, brightness zero so it's a black light. I'm going to add a point here on its alpha ramp and make that so it's mainly solid and then I'm going to click in the center of the face to move the light to reflect in that face. Now, to just check what's going on here, I'm gonna change the color of this light to red and put the brightness back up to 100 and solo that light. And then we can see, as I kind of scale that up, we can see the effect of in the reflections it's having just in the front there. So if I go too far, I'm covering too many of the reflections. But if I just take that down, and we'll leave a bit of soft, we'll reduce it so there's a bit softer on the edge. And then I'll unsolo and make the brightness zero because it doesn't matter what color it is, if it's zero brightness, it's going to basically be black. Now, that, as you can see, if I hide that light, you can see how washed out the face is and you can see the line going across. And then if I show that, that has killed the lighting coming to the front of that face 
uh, but it hasn't affected the rest of the watch so that's quite handy so now what I can do um, is get something like one of these tracing paper lights let's say and I'll drag and drop that onto the face here and then scale it down and we're going to use this light to kind of create a bit of interest in the face and bring some illumination back to that face and we can solo this again and actually I quite like how that's highlighting on this edge it's creating a bit of shadow creating a bit of form it's bringing alive these numbers on here where some of them are seeing that light some of them aren't so if I unsolo that let the render develop a little you can see the face is now well lit it's got contrast in it um, and we did that by taking control and adding these two extra lights to make it kind of black and then add add back a bit of a highlight in that area so that looks good to me now the only thing that's bothering me now is just at the side of the watch here um, I'd quite like on this uh, side of the the dial here to control that reflection a little bit more where the black line is kind of going around so let's see if we can get a, a light here and we'll just pop that on the canvas and then I'll just click on this edge here solo that light and scale it up a bit now the problem we've got there is that spilling onto the bezel and we don't want to disrupt the bezel so we can just make some small adjustments left and right and see what we can do so I don't mind that at the glancing angle and that's kind of following nicely and catching highlights on those edges there so I'm going to leave that there so I haven't managed to get rid of that line totally but I have managed to get a nice highlight on that edge so just looking at the balance of this I think that the tracing paper light could maybe be a little bit brighter to bring that face to be a little bit whiter and I'm going to maybe just move it across slightly okay so basically I'm pretty happy with that I think that's I think that's absolutely fine so if we look at our reference image again we've got the bright highlight we're graduating around we've got some nice highlights there highlight there and if we kind of look at that kind of side by side oops look at that side by side I think we've captured the essence of this style of lighting. I think if anything, the top highlights on here could do with a bit of a boost to give it a bit more form. So I think we'll do that. And I actually think the graduation is a little bit dark here. So we'll just make an edit to that to top light. And we should have really labeled these as we go along, but this is the light at the top give that a boost so we've got more of a highlight there and then on this gradient we're going to adjust it so it doesn't come down to be quite so dark and the same for the other side okay so I'm happy with that so let's render out the final lighting browse to the location I want save the file called lights render out at 3k excellent so now cinema 4d is using that final lighting I can now press stop on the connection panel and this scene is now ready to be rendered on any computer it doesn't need a HDR light studio license um, it's all standard uh, lighting created for Arnold 
and if we just do a little test here with the IPR again we could now do our final production render of this shot lit with HDR Light Studio so we hope you enjoyed this tutorial you can download this scene and follow along and uh, download a trial and have a go and we hope you enjoy playing with the software thank you for watching